Hello everyone, I'm Kirby, this is Kirby Meets Audio, and today we're gonna to be talking about signal flow in a home audio setup. So there's two types of speakers. There's powered speakers and there's passive speakers. A powered speaker, like this one right here, has an actual audio amp built into the enclosure that powers the drivers. So you connect your source, like a phone or a computer, uh, straight into the amplifier via cable or over the air through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So the source would play the signal, the audio signal, the amplifier would amplify that signal and drive the drivers, the speakers, and those would make sound. And that's how that works. Pretty simple. So then we have passive speakers. Now, passive speakers contain no audio amplifier within the enclosure. They only contain the essential parts needed for the speaker after the amplifier. So in this speaker, we have a woofer, we have a tweeter, we have a crossover within the enclosure that filters the audio signal, and then we have terminals, basically inputs to the speaker on the back. Uh, so a signal can come from the amplifier into this speaker. Bare bones, that's all, that's all it needs. Basically, all speakers need an audio amp to power the drivers. Uh, a powered speaker has that audio amp within the enclosure. Passive speakers has that audio amp external from the enclosure. And that's the basics of it. Um, yeah, let's move on. The best part of a home audio system with passive speakers is that all the components that you need prior to the actual speakers uh, can be had really cheaply and really simply. And then you can work your way up by switching out the components to a more complex and expensive system. They're just, it's a little more free to uh, have fun and experiment with and grow in home audio. It's fun. And, and a little addicting, <laughs> just a little bit. So let's start with the simple setup. You really only need three things to have a really good home audio system. Uh, you need a source, so you need something like a phone, a tablet, a computer, or a record player, anything that has music on it. You need an integrated amplifier, so something small like this little guy or a little bigger. And then you need passive speakers. And that's it. It's pretty simple. So let's make it a little more complicated. Basically what we're going to do is take each step of the signal flow and break it down into the specific standalone piece of equipment that you can add to the system. All right, let's get specific. So just like in the simple setup, we start with a source. But a step that we don't worry about in the simple setup is a DAC. Now when a song is stored on a digital device like a phone, laptop, or hard drive, it's stored in binary or a combination of ones and zeros. The DAC converts that digital information into an analog signal or electricity that can be processed by the rest of the information down the signal path. Uh, DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter. In most of our digital devices, they have a built-in DAC, a tiny little chip that's inside this guy. Um, they're okay, uh, but they can be better, much better. And, and you gotta think about it, this is the actual process of taking ones and zeros, the little the information, and it's the first step in converting it into sound, into the electrical signal that will eventually create the sound. Um, so it's really important that that's done in a specific good way. So that's why a lot of people opt to get a standalone, uh, much more specific DAC, a better DAC. But standalone DACs have to be connected to your digital devices a little bit different than you might be used to. So remember, we want the DAC to do the converting from the digital to the analog. So we have to connect our devices to the DAC with a digital path. Now we can do this through uh, USB or optical cable, but we can't use like the traditional headphone jack out of this tablet uh, to connect to the DAC because the headphone jack has already been converted from the digital to the analog. Um, so that might be a little tricky depending on your setup. But like something like this laptop has an optical out uh, out of the headphone jack. It has, it's a dual purpose jack. Another way of connecting is using a Bluetooth receiver that has an optical out. So you would connect your phone to the Bluetooth receiver, uh, the Bluetooth receiver would send a digital signal through the optical cable into the DAC, and that's how it would connect to the source. Um, just a few ways to connect. Something else to think about. 
So the DAC I use in my system is a Shit Audio uh, Bifrost Uber DAC. Um, they're really good quality uh, and not super expensive. They're a little pricey, but nothing close to what they sh probably should be. It's super high quality. I'll put links down in the description, check it out, it's cool. So the next part of our signal flow is a preamp. Um, so our DAC converted our digital information into an analog signal, but that signal has super low voltage. Um, so what the preamp does is it increases that voltage and gets it ready for the power amp. Um, if you didn't increase the voltage and went straight from the DAC to the power amp, you would have a really noisy um, and distorted signal. It wouldn't sound very good. So this is also a great place to color your signal, um, to tweak it in subtle ways or not so subtle ways. Um, a lot of people like the sound of tube amplifiers, but power tube amplifiers can be really expensive. So you can get a tube amplified preamp uh, and get some of that tube sound into your signal flow uh, a little cheaper. Just like with the DAC in the simple audio setup, pre-amplification is done inside your phone or your tablet or your computer, and it's also done inside of an integrated audio amp. Um, integrated just means that it has a pre-built, pre-built in uh, pre-amplifier into the power amp. Uh, those are pretty standard, it's, yeah. So when you're adjusting the volume on your phone, you're actually adjusting the volume of the pre-amplifier within your phone. And a little tip, um, if you want to get the best sound from your simple setup, uh, increase the volume on your phone up to like 90% and then use the volume on your power amplifier or integrated amplifier to do the actual volume adjusting within the room. Um, most amplifiers want as hot of an input as they can take before they start distorting for the best sound. So crank it on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last part of the active electrical equipment is the power amp. And much like the preamp, uh, the power amp is increasing the signal strength, but this time we're also increasing the signal current, the electrical current within the signal, um, to a point that it can actually physically move the drivers within our speakers. Most amps are integrated amps, and some amps are just power amps. Um, you just need to remember that solely power, standalone power amps need a preamplifier, and if you're setting up a simple uh, home audio setup, you need an integrated amp but that, that's it. So there's a bunch of different kinds of power amps and integrated amps out there on the market. I'm not gonna get into all of those right here. I'm gonna save that for uh, another video. Let's move on. So we finally got into the noise makers. Um, so that hot signal coming from the power amplifier will come into the back of the speaker. Uh, that signal will meet the crossover. The crossover will filter that signal and then connect to uh, either this tweeter or the woofer, both of them at the same time. <laughs> so in the case of this speaker, uh, the mid to low frequencies would be allowed to travel to the woofer while the higher frequencies are filtered out and the high frequencies would be allowed to connect to the tweeter while the mid to low frequencies are filtered out. And that's how the crossover works in this guy. The electricity in that signal affects the magnet the magnet moves the cone of the driver. Uh, the driver moves the air within the room. The air within the room moves the diaphragm within your ear and your brain interprets that as sound. And that's how it works. All right, recap. We have source to DAC to preamp to power amp to speakers to air to ear. And that's pretty much it. It's not too bad, not too hard. So I'll have links uh, to all my favorite equipment to all these steps down in the description. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Um, I will also in the future go into more depth into each one of these steps uh, and talk about how each one of them works. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, I also have uh, build plans and speaker kits up on my website. You can check them out right up here, somewhere over there. Um, Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, you're awesome. You're all the awesome. You're, you're, you're great. You know you're great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you. See ya.